So, got the pan into position, marked up the bit that we need to cut out for the saw part to go through. Hopefully, when we're cutting it, it's not going to shatter the pan and end up in a million bits. So, this could go one of two ways. What I do now is sort out the spacings for the pan and for the tail rail. So the edge of the door is going to be here. We've got four foot in between there. Tail rail will go centre of that two foot. The pan will go centre of there. So the plaster has just rung me. He's sat outside 248 of this job and he's just rung me. He's going, where are you? I said, I'm inside, mate. My van's outside. It's 284, isn't it? 284 giving the wrong address sorted hopefully right i think we've got it here we go so we're getting there with this bathroom now it's all been completely stripped out, as I've said in previous videos. Since we've last been here, we've took the wallpaper off just so it's a better canvas for when Nath comes to tile it. Got the pipe working for the basin. What I'm going to do today is just move this pipe for the shower along, bring it out here. We'll clip it to the bottom of this joist. Take the cable to it as well. Bring the cold feed out for the toilet just about there. If we get a chance, we'll move the heating pipes across. But what I want to do today is sort the issue out with this pan because the customer's brought a back to the wall pan and obviously the stack's coming in this side so we're going to have to trim out the side of the pan now i think i said in the last video i've done it before a couple of times and it's been okay but what i've done i spoke to Stuart, the customer and said there is a chance that it could break the pan when we're cutting that side out touch wood i've never broke a pan yet doing it but it's always best for something like that to cover your ass and just say, look, I can give it a go, but I can't 100% guarantee it's not going to bust the pan. So I'll give that a go as well. Hopefully it goes all right. And then we can sort of set exactly where that's got to go and then get our dimensions for where the tail rail is and bring that out there. And then also what we've got to do at some point is go and pick up the boards. because I'm going to completely moisture board this wall and down there as well. So that's the pipe work in for the shower, it's coming out in its position, I've also brought the power cable out. But what we've got to do now is sort out the spacings for the pan and for the tail rail. So the first thing you do with this is work out where the door swings to. So the edge of the door is going to be here. So follow that line up. From there, from that point to the edge of the boxing, we've got four foot in between there. So just halve it. So you've got two foot there, tail rail will go centre of that two foot, and then the other side here, and the pan will go centre of there. So we'll just line this up now, and as I've said earlier on, because this has got to go into the side, we're going to have to trim a bit of that out. Um, and then this boxing is going to come down at a later date, and then we'll just box round where that saw pipe goes in. Because it just finishes this side, off a lot better and with just that tiny bit of box in there it's going to be this side of the pan you're never going to see it this tower rail's got it's upside down at the minute but this tower rail's got them two feeds in the center there so by the time it's spun round we've got to chop the heating pipes into the wall and bring them out exactly where they've got to go so yeah today's working out what's going where here and and again before i carry on we know that the cold feed has got to be internal of here. So we'll mark around the bottom of the pan and we know what area we then got to work from. So I've marked around, I don't know if you can see the outside of the pan because the cold feed has got to be internal. So we've marked up because we've got a bit of a lip on the pan there. We just come in an inch or so, inch and a half, marked it up there and it's fallen. Near on perfectly, we just bang an elbow on there and come up with it. So that will be the cold feed into the pan. So, what I'm going to do now is mark up around the side of that soil pipe and offer it into position at the side of here 
and then get the disc cutter and well I've got an angle grinder then we'll get the angle grinder with the ceramic bit in it and look at cutting out the side of this pan and hopefully it doesn't shatter into a million pieces so got the pan into position marked up the bit that we need to cut out for the saw part to go through and uh, got the disc cutter got the vac just to get rid of a bit of dust when we're doing it and um, before anyone says anything got my goggles as well so I put the camera up here so you can see because hopefully when we're cutting it it's not going to shatter the pan and end up in a million bits so this could go one of two ways Right, that's that first edge done. I'm just trying to keep it a bit cool with this rag. But yeah, it's done there. So what we'll do now is cut across there and across there. That's quite a thick bit here though. So hopefully we'll be all right. Way through as you can see we're through here we've just got this little lip here to get that's done and then just along that top line and through the back now hopefully I can get the angle grinder internally there and just get to them bits and last little bits but uh, yeah it's probably taken 10 minutes or so to get to this point Hopefully, hopefully I've marked it in the right place. <laughs> Sorted, hopefully. Right, I think we've got it. Here we go. Yes. Perfect. That fits a treat now in there and by the time we've put a little bit of saw pipe in there and what I always do with these close couple back to the wall pans is put a flexi connector from there into the back. It just means that when you come to fit it you can pull it out to this sort of position here, get your hand in, connect everything up, connect the coal feed and whatnot on and then you've just got that little bit of room to push it back in. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm glad that's come out the side. And then, as I said, when this is boxed, we'll just box across the top of that, down the front, and just tile that in so you'll never even know. So we're moving on now to getting the first fixed pipe working for this towel rail that's going here. Now I've worked out, basically we've got a 600 gap here. So obviously center of that, 300, that is our center line for our towel rail. Now this towel rail has got two feeds coming out the bottom. So those two feeds are gonna sit in the center, the 50 mil apart, and this is where the line of them is gonna be. So what we'll do, we'll mark out exactly where they're gonna go so we can get the pipe work, the heating pipes are here at the minute, and get the pipe work up, chopped into the wall and just poking out. I'll probably leave them out so far. And then when the towel rail goes on, we can connect them up afterwards but they've got to be bang on in the right position for when the tiles go on so that lads can cut round them and uh, and get them right into position depending on how big the holes are because it's a black towel rail, i'll have to get some talon shrouds and little talon black um you know the clips that go over the pipes in black just to cover that up so let's get this marked out, chop this bit of the wall out, and then we can get the floor up, get the heating drained. I'll probably, as always, probably bong a tank because it is a gravity fed system, and then we can get these two pipes into position here. 
So I've got the pipe work in the wall now, ready for that rad. They're 50 mil apart and they're perfectly level. So that's all ready there. We've brought the pipe work down here. It's gonna go across and pick up where these uh, old tower rail pipes are. So one here, which I'm gonna cut back to here. And then we're gonna cut the other one off here. But first of all, we're going to bung the tank as per usual. Luckily it's very accessible here. So we'll stick these bungs in the tank and then drain some heating water off through them pipes. So they are just through here, which is nice and straightforward. So that's the heating tank. We'll just get a light on so you can see what we're doing. Right, as per usual, we can bung the tank so we can pop one up into the vent, like so. And then the other one into the feed. So, we've got one bung in the bottom, one bung on the vent. Let's go in there, cause a vacuum and get it drained down. So, with that bung in place now, what we'll do, we'll just open up this valve and just see if it'll open. There we go. We'll just see if the bung's held. It should. A little bit of water out and it should just slow, slowly die off. Like so. That's better. Let's get this funnel. These funnels are perfect. They're Nurad. So if you search Nurad funnel, you'll get one of them. I'll put a link in the description below anyway, but they are very handy to have. So that's the pipe working now for that tow rail set 50 mil apart and they're level all filled up now i've took the bungs out of the tanks um, and we had what we had here we've got a steel there so when they come to tile it they're gonna have to be pretty clear this will all get filled in anyway but we're gonna have to be quite tight um to where that's gonna go but all is well so that's that done. What I'm going to do now is have a complete tidy up in here now because that is all the pipe working. So we've got tail rail pipe working, toilets in, ready for the saw pipe to go into the side, cut the pan out, that's all good. Got the basin pipe working, and we've got the shower pipe working. So we'll have a clear out and then I might go and pick up the boards for this wall and for here. We've got the moisture boards, we've got two of them up already, but because this stairway is so tight and the ceiling's so low here, I've had to cut the boards in half to get them up into position for this bathroom. Which isn't a problem, it's still going to work, but just meant cutting them down. So we'll get these put into position here, get this one done and get that done. So the boards are going up fairly easy, get that one back in there and then we'll just cut some slithers along the top and then we'll tie it in with that board down there. Get these in and we'll call it a day for today because tomorrow all we'll have to do then is get that tray in and just get everywhere prepped up, ready for the ceiling to go on, overboard and skim, and then we're ready for the tilers next week. So there we go, all moisture boards are on. Got them in there, got them there, poked up for the shower, poked up for the basin and obviously when the plaster comes with board and skin the ceiling. But that's ready now. So what we'll do with the tray tomorrow, we'll place it into position, mark it up, and then hopefully it's not gonna fall onto any of these joists or anything like that. We have got legs for it, but the customer wants to try and keep it as low down as possible. So we'll have a look at doing that. But yeah, I just wanted to get all these moisture balls on today, which I've done. So I'm gonna go and uh, get in the shower because we all know, fair play to the plasterers, there couldn't be a plasterer. You just get covered in crap. Oh, the trousers are full. We're getting this shower tray fitted in today. So what I've just done, I have laid it into position. Let me just show you. It's quite a light resin one actually, which is nice. So. Right, 
right, so I've laid it into position just to show you, and then what I've done, I've marked round where the waist is going to go. And then if I lift it back up, I'm trying to do it one handed to show you. So then that is exactly where the waist trap's going to go. So we'll offer the waist trap into position above it, and we can see where we've got to just trim out slightly out that joist and out these floorboards here. Now, on my previous video, loads of people said about trimming the joist. You can't trim the joist to get the waste pipes in. When you've got a bathroom like this and everyone wants the pipe work covered in, that's how you have to do it. And a few people said about the fall on the waste. It's absolutely fine. It's going to be sitting up. We've got a ply on here anyway. We've got some 9mm board here that will lay down on underneath the tray, trim it so that when the tiles, because obviously with the tiling the floors are, when they come up, there won't be that much of a lip into the tray. But yeah, that's lifting it up as well, so it's not a problem. We'll get this now trimmed out, sit this in, and get the boards on and mark them up, and then we can start leveling the tray through. So well. what I'll do now, I'll put these two boards down, and what we'll do, we'll put the shower tray on top of these two boards, mark round it, then we can cut them out to suit so that them boards are directly underneath the tray. It's going to lift it up about 9 mil, but as I said before, we're tiling the floor anyway, so it's going to lift it up and it's just going to leave it a nice finish on the bottom. So we'll drop this in now and get it marked up. Put it up against the walls. And there, not really it, we also mark that out for the waist, then we'll lift this up, get these boards cut, put them in, screw them into position and we can start getting that waist in. As you can see now that base is in and what I've done is, if I show you here, I've marked out exactly where this waist is going to go. So that's going to sit there and it will just raise up ever so slightly just to connect onto the bottom of the tray. But what I've done, I've marked the wall here and I've marked under here so we know when we take this out of the way, so we can lift all this out of the way now, make the floor up there and then get that trap perfectly set in there and connected onto that inch and a half there and then that is in solid ready for the tray to just drop on and then what we'll do we'll get the boards down screw them down and then it's ready to just put some ct ones what you, i mean i'm going to use i can't think what it is i didn't have and didn't have any ct one at mkn the builders merchants so i'm going to use a similar product to that they can use silicon you can use sand and cement you know it's the age old thing now what do people use to do it i personally use either ct1 dura plus something along the lines of that if it's going onto a concrete floor and for whatever reason the floor is completely out of level i'll use sand and cement but nine times out of ten like this when we put this board in it is completely level anyway so there's no danger there so let's get this fixed down get the waist made up into pipe work get it all solid into position and we can start dropping the tray in right there we go that base is all down pipe works all into position now i always put a little bead of silicon around there then we'll get the um what have we got where is it it's near somewhere and then what i've got for this one is ob1 sealant and adhesive it's basically the same as ct1 or dura plus so we'll put that on the base of the tray get that laid down bedded on so it's all into position and also a little trick i use with shower trays is get yourself a good suction cups i think these are off amazon for like 15 quid it just makes moving it a lot easier you just lift it up off it out of the way Uh, 
So that's the sort of coverage I give it. I put a load of blobs just to bed it down that little bit. But these, they're absolutely solid now. These shower trays are, by the time it's bedded down on that, on that tray, it'll be absolutely perfect. Perfect. So that's in. So what I always do now, I run a bead of silicon all the way around there, just as a fail safe, really. And it just bridges that gap. So that's all the way around the outside, and we'll just push it all in now. There's absolutely no reason to not do that. It just makes it that little bit more watertight. That's the tray in now, and as I just said, I've sealed all around the outside of it, just with silicon, because when Nath, my tiler, comes to start tiling this next week, he's got his own tanking kit, or a specific tanking kit that he likes to work with, that he knows works, tried and tested formula, so he will be applying that, he'll tape up all the joints, and tape up around the bottom, and like, sort of like, make it doubly waterproof, if you know what I mean, and all around where the um, fittings and that come through the wall, so Nath will do that when he tiles, but that, in essence, is the shower tray in and ready. That's that job now, just about first fixed out. It just seems to have been quite labour intense. It just dragged on a little bit for some reason. I think because it's such a small bathroom and I had to cut all the pipe work out the floor and alter the stack and, and just do loads of bits whereas usually the bathrooms I do are quite big and spread out and it's you seem to get it in quicker if that makes sense i don't know if it does but that's all done now boarded i've got a little bit of boxing to finish off tomorrow but i thought i'll go away get some boards for that scotty the plaster is coming tomorrow mid-morning to skim that ceiling up board and skim that ceiling and then it's ready next week for knife to get in to start banging some tiles on and get it looking more like a bathroom um so yeah so i've had an early finish today i thought sorry i've been grafting all week on that my knees are battered i went into the plumb base the other day and they had these knee pads and i put them on my instagram red backs i think they're called like uh, like honeycomby sort of ones as opposed to the foam ones that i've got in these busy workwear trousers at the minute so i might look at swapping them because my, my knees are in bits this week and i don't usually suffer with my knees but i always have knee pads in anyway so i might try some of them red back ones right that's it for today. I'll um, I'll catch you in the morning when Scotty's there sorting the ceiling out and just finishing off ready for next week. So the plaster has just rung me. He sat outside 248 of this job and he's just rung me. He's going, where are you? I said, I'm inside, mate. My van's outside. It's 284, isn't it? It's 284. Give him the wrong address. So he's, uh, he's coming in a minute. We'll catch him. He'll be fucking effing and jeffing down the down the lens at me. Here he is. Look. Look. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. Two eight four, kid. <laughs> so it's Friday. What a lovely day. What a lovely day. So, plasterers are turned up, as always, if you've ever had plasterers on your jobs, you know, for some reason, whenever they're working, they leave the vans wide open. I suppose because they're never going to nick anything out of that, are they? If anything, they're going to break in and clean it up. But anyway, got the board down, so we're just not ruining customer's drive. Let's go up here. So, he's been getting the ceiling on this morning. We had it overboarded, and Scotty's just been skimming it up, just finishing it off, look extra tools hop up for him so he can reach <laughs> so all those people that come at me let me turn adam and down so all those people that come at me in the last video about my electrician smashing holes in the ceiling going what a fucking animal it's not a problem look. overboard skimmed done so boxed that lot in boarded that got that ready and if you can remember before you can just about see it here the soil pipe was boxed right out I've managed to keep it flush with that, so when Nave tiles it next week, we can just come straight off that, tile that reveal, and it's just loads neater, and then that pan that we cut out earlier, it's gonna sit there, 
saw piper going to the side of it and we'll just box off there box down and toil that so that'll never be seen so there we go week one done on this bathroom so just a quick overview we've obviously took out the existing bathroom that was in there we altered the pipes under the floor to bring everything out in its new position tower rail there toilets going in there basin on this wall got the electrics in there shaver point got rid of the old electrics uh, took the old shower out got the new one in low level altered the waste pipes under the floor remember we altered that soil pipe and remember there was that box in there we've managed to get rid of that which is great so it's all ready now boarded scott is just finished going over the ceiling so the ceiling's all done so it's ready now for nath the toiler to come in monday get all this tanked out and begin getting the tiles on so that was week one on this bathroom renovation we'll drop in next week see how nice getting on but we've got some other bits to do anyway so thanks for watching hit the subscribe button hit the like button all that jazz and i'll catch you next week yeah.